Do I not hear me? Yeah, like so much. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Wait yeah. a minute. <clears throat> Good stuff. Um, Thomas, first of all, after Bucharest, are there any fresh uh, injury concerns? And is Thiago Silva fit for Sunday? Both questions are no, no, no more injury concerns, and uh, no, Thiago cannot play on Sunday. How far away is he? Do you think he did a, a individual session today, but a session on the pitch, and felt uh, was a big progress, big step ahead or uh, up front for him. So I hope he will join the group next week. Obviously, uh, mm -hmm. Olivier Giroud scored a wonder goal for you in midweek. Yeah. He deserves another start, doesn't he? All the time. He deserves to start all the time. He trains, he trains very well. He's uh, a leader in the group. He's a big personality. So even when he did not start, he deserved to start. So, but I will not tell you now if, he, if we will let him uh, uh, play from the first minute. Thomas, this is a classic looking match on Sunday. United, of course, are still unbeaten away from home. Yeah. How do you see the tactical matchup and um, what are the implications for the top four, do you think? What are the implications? What would the effect be of the game on the top four? Oh, well. <laughs> Hopefully we can win. This is what we what we go for. We know that it's a big uh, big challenge because, like you said, they have an unbeaten away record so far. So we know what we are up against: uh, a team that can hurt you any second with individual quality, a team that can hurt you any second with uh, with speed, and um, they. They uh, they are a strong team from away. They can they can uh, defend very compact. They are very very good in transition with their wingers, with Rashford, with Bruno Fernandes for deliveries, and then Greenwood, Eddie Cavani, Martial, whoever plays, will be a big challenge to defend all this, to defend counter attacks. The implication is is huge, of course. Uh, if we get a winner out, of, if we get a win out of this game, it's huge for us. If they get a win, it will be huge for them to put a, a, a difference between us and to increase the difference. So let's see. I mean, we are very aware. Today was not the day where where uh, we focus absolutely. Today was the day to to also bring the group together, do a good training on the pitch, and from tomorrow on, we will be totally focused for this game. Yeah, you mentioned Cavani. What are your thoughts about running into him again at the age of uh, 34? I mean, like Giroud, he's the same age. They're both 34. What's the secret of their longevity, do you think? Look at them. When they switch shirts, they are totally fit. I mean, the guys, the, their fitness is key. And uh, Oli is 100% is fit. Zero body fat, <laughs> and uh, the same as Eddie. Eddie, um, Eddie is, is is a player like 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 Odi, uh, like Oli, who who is uh, as a number nine, always concerned about the team, always re ready to suffer for the team, always ready to sacrifice, always ready to 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 do runs to open spaces, always ready to defend with the whole team, and this is the characteristic of them both. And then in the box, they are both uh, excellent finishers. They are, they have the experience. They don't get nervous. They have the composure. So, yeah, both um, top quality top quality strikers, top quality number nines. And and for me, their their fitness and their self discipline is is key to their success. Yeah, and just one last one on Giroud's diet. So we've been seeing pictures of his diet in the last few days. It looks incredible. I mean, what would you say about the things that Ollie's eating and, and not eating? <laughs> I don't know about his diet. I just see I just see I just see his body, and uh, we do. Of course, I know his his body fat and uh, his his measurements and and all the stuff because because we control this on a regular basis. Oli is fit and this is what I mean. And, and it is of course also about what he eats and, and he treats his body very well and he knows that this is, uh, it is the, the basis for, for his success and for his, his game. He's fit as ever. He can rely on his, his physical uh, impact in the game. It's hard to play against him. And um, he, he's used to play a high rhythm, he's used to play in, in Premier League and this helps him a lot, I think, to, to be on this level and he's very self-aware. He's in, a, in, a, in a, um, a fantastic mood every day 
to to push everybody around him to play uh, to 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 win every little games we do in training to be very very positive with everybody around him so and this, that did never change even when he did not start every game for us or he did not c even come from the bench in some matches his mood and his uh, attitude never changed and this is uh, this is what in the end makes the difference between uh, between also good players and, and big personalities and, and Oli is for sure a big personality. Olivia, PLP. Hi Thomas. Hi. Um, you're no stranger to facing Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. United of course came up against them twice in the Champions League, won one, lost one. I just want to know what you've learnt about United in those matches and has that helped you in preparation for this game coming up? Yeah, for sure. We we played we played twice against them in, in Champions League. We unfortunately lost both home matches and we could win both away games. So it's pretty pretty strange results. Um, we hope that we can turn this around and uh, win also at home. But as you see, they are still unbeaten in Premier League and away games. That means that the the challenge is big because they. They like to have space. They like to play on counter attacks. They like to um, uh, to uh, to use their speed and to absorb your speed in in their own half and and use their speed on the counter attacks and all their quality that they have. Yeah, but it helps a lot because, like you said, we played we played two consecutive years against them and it was uh, tough matches. And uh, we will use that knowledge and and prepare our team from tomorrow on. Um, and you said, um, you know, when you got the job at Chelsea, that you wanted to make them, you know, hard to beat, a team that no one likes to play. In your first eight games, you of course haven't lost, um, conceded very few goals. Um, do you think you've done that? I know we're only eight games in, but have you seen that in this Chelsea team? And, you know, the two biggest tests, arguably, that you had were Spurs and Atletico, and you won both of them and, and didn't concede a goal. Yeah, and we won both of them in away games and uh, yeah, I see a lot of good things and uh, I think it's not a pleasure to play against us, but, I, but the picture is not finished. Um, we have still a long way to go and we have a lot of things to improve and this is the, this is the good message and this is the good news. And uh, we have, we, there's no other way than to stay hungry and then to be ready to improve every day and, and we need to do this, there's a lot, lot of things to improve. But uh, I can clearly feel the, the, the attitude and the energy of, of my team on the pitch that we are a, a strong group with a strong bond and we, are, we, are, we have strong competitors in our group and uh, that makes us hard to beat. I believe strongly that, that football is a team effort and, uh, and that, that you can be uh, more than just uh, 11 individuals and, and 16, 18 individuals. And, and this is what, what we want to create and what we want to focus besides tactics and besides um, uh, technical and uh, tactical um, and tricks that you can uh, maybe invent or not invent or, 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 or pull. But um, the most important is that we are a strong group. And, um, and this, is the, this is the mentality that I feel on the sideline uh, when, I, when, I, when I coach the team and when I when I observe the matches and this is the, the best feeling that we can have and yeah we're on a good way but we're, we're not it's not finished. Moose talk sport. Unmute yourself Moose. I always forget that. Hi Thomas how are you? Good good good. Your biggest game so far as Chelsea manager? Oh uh, I don't know I don't know we had a uh, in in general, I would say that like the big games are always the next games because there are no bigger games than the than the games that you play in general. And then there are some some special fixtures. It's obvious. There was a London derby. There was a Champions League game in Madrid. Now it's it's Man United, uh, Liverpool, and and Everton in the league. is a uh, is a uh, is a series of 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 big fixtures and and of course big teams. And big challenges uh, to overcome, but this is exactly why we are here, and we're looking forward to to prepare the team from tomorrow on and uh, to be ready on Sunday. This has already been stated. You know Manchester United very well from the Champions League. Um, does it really count for anything? I mean, you played twice already this season, but yeah. this is a completely different game. I mean, players who may well have been informed before Christmas yeah. may be out of form now. 
It's always like this, but it helps. It helps, you know, the style, you know, the, you know, the strengths, you know, the weaknesses. It helps you to prepare. But it's not that we will show pictures from these games to our team. We will we will focus on the last four weeks, like always. But uh, to have a clear picture from from the two fixtures in this season and even from from uh, from uh, from one and a half years earlier, we played them in in the knockout. So. We have a pretty pretty good impression from from the style that they play, from the from the spaces where they want to hurt us, from their strengths uh, individually and as a group, and that helps to prepare. Um, but like I said, we will not show pictures from from our games. We will uh, underline our opinion and our knowledge and our feeling from from Man United with with pictures from the last four weeks, like we always do. And then we will prepare our team to 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 hopefully win this match, and 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 we will totally focus on us. In the end, we will focus on us. What we have to do if we want to be able to 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 win this difficult match, and there is a lot to do. But we are also on a good run, and uh, it's a it's a big challenge to be the first ones who who beat them on our away game. One more, please, Moose. Yeah, I was going to ask you about a man you, you know who's already, already said it's important to you, Olivier Giroud. And the word you've used two or three times in that last answer is style. Now, on the pitch, he's scoring a lot of goals. Off the pitch, he's the most stylish man at Chelsea. I've been down to him a few times. He wears the best clothes. His beard is always impeccably uh, maintained. How do, you, how, do you cope? how do you come up against him in that respect? Do you, are you quite scruffy or do you, do, do, are you quite good in terms of your clothing compared to Olivier Giroud? I, I, I try to close the gap. I try to close the gap. In the moment, it's not possible because I arrived with only one suitcase, so there is no chance for me. Um, but I will, I will try hard to close the gap style-wise, if it's possible. Obviously not. I mean, I have to trust you that the guy is top-notch and highest level. I will try to, to close the gap that it's not embarrassing for, for Oli that, that I'm his coach. Alison, last... Hi. Hi, I'm fine. And just um, we try to learn a bit more about you. We're, we're obviously reading reports. We hear that you um, you offered the team a, an extra two days off if they would uh, win. And we're also hearing that you're very good at talking to other players that aren't always playing. Can you tell us a bit about the, the kind of things that you do to sort of incentivise your players? Uh, yeah, good question. I don't. I, it's very hard to talk about myself first of all, and it's very hard to to talk about what I do because many things I do out of intuition. Is it intuition? Out of intuition, and I do naturally, and I do with what I feel comfortable. And then it's uh, hard to answer a question like this because then you suddenly have to reflect it, and and many things come come just naturally. But uh, of course, I I feel strongly that like in the moment, like you mentioned, that there are players that are frustrated, that are not happy because maybe they have some uh, unfair decisions from me or they, they feel it unfair and maybe they are even unfair because right now everybody in the groups uh, try, still tries hard to play and a lot of players deserve it. So, um, yeah, it is the challenge as a coach to, to, to uh, not lose the connection to, to all the players and uh, not lose the connection also to the guys who do not play so much and uh, and uh, yeah, at the same time, to not lose the the connection, and also sometimes it's it's, uh, it's important to have a day off, and and we offer them a sef second day off after I think the Newcastle match at home, if they if they win this game because we were on a very good run. So sometimes it's almost of it's intuition. Sometimes it's planned, but. Um, I don't follow. I don't follow a, a, a guidance, or I don't follow a, a book or a, a leadership book or something else. I, I talk a lot to people when when there is time, um, who are in leadership, who are in 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 in, um, in leadership roles and in, in in different roles, and and I try to learn every day. And uh, I think the most important is that 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 we that we that we keep the connection as a as a coach nowadays to your group, and that that uh, that can that can mean that you have to be critical, and you and there's also a kind of a worship, and that there's a there's, that uh, we keep a trust to each other. 
that that keeps us going and uh, hopefully i yeah hopefully we can we can do this together and hopefully i feel i feel the same involvement from me with the group like i like i do now but this is clearly the challenge and uh, you need also a little bit of luck with your decisions and with the results because that makes things uh, obviously more easier okay that's the end of the broadcast section